What is up, YouTube? What is up, family? We have a Patreon request. We got some rum stuff. No, we don't. Wait, we got some electric core bo No, we don't. We got five German character traits I really respect. That's what it's called. That's the video. That's what he wants me to check out. So, because he's a Patreon, I have to check it out. So let's check it out. I got a feeling this is not a music video. So that's good. That's good. We're going to learn maybe about some Germans. We're going to learn about Germany a little bit. Let's go. There are certain characteristics that, in general, many German people seem to have in common. They seem to be part of a national attitude. In this video, I'm going to talk about five traits and characteristics of Germans that I have really come to respect and admire. Some of them are smaller, more trivial things, but some are deeper. In fact, the last point on this list is pretty intense and could be considered controversial. However, I think it's an important thing to point out. Look at that. Look at that architecture. Look at that. That's what you call a village. Spotless, clean. Just a totally different kind of build, man. That's beautiful. I like it. I definitely like it. Very different. You don't see that in many countries, probably other than Germany, but very different. Very dollhouse lookish. Uh, lookish? I, I don't know. I mean, feels like something I would build with like a Lego set. I don't know. I, this is weird, but it looks really cool. It really does. All the roofs, the same colors, more or less. Anyway, very cool. So, here are five characteristics of Germans I really respect. Having a high standard. Is that Joe Flacco? What the hell? Baltimore Ravens? Is he German? I thought he was Irish. That is Joe Flacco, right? What the hell does he know about Germans? Is this. Is that the Baltimore. No, I don't know. Anyway. Interesting. Having a high standard of excellence. You know, the most respected made-in tag in the world of any country is the Made in Germany tag. Uh. Where's China? I don't, I don't, where's China on the list? <laughs> Sorry, China. <laughs> when I see Made in China, which is 95% of everything, uh, yeah, we know it's not going to last long. I'm sorry. It's true. It's not going to last long. Uh, Germany, yeah, first thing I think about, first thing I think about, BMW. And don't get me wrong. What I've been told, because I've never actually owned one in, you know, from Germany. Of course, over here, United States, they're built here. So I've had a BMW here. And after five years, they suck. But from what I've told, from what I've been told, if you get one that's built in Germany, that is what you call what they call it? The re a real uh, uh uh shit. What's the what's the what's the the logo for BMW? Something machine. Uh oh my god. I had one for freaking twelve years and I don't even remember. Something machine shit. I don't believe it. Oh anyway, whatever the hell. All I know is if you get one that is made in Germany, uh, I've been told that is a BMW. <laughs> what you what you're driving over there in the United States built over that ain't no BMW. You got to get one that's built in Germany, and then you'll see what a how a BMW will literally last twenty years. No, oh, I, I get it. I believe it. I one hundred percent believe it. 
Whether it's something physical that you make that's world-class like German cars or German houses that are built and are meant to last a lifetime or things that you don't physically make that you can't physically touch. What comes to mind for me is a German friendship. Germans are typically slow to call somebody a friend and that is because there's a high standard of excellence when it comes like to friendship as well. Man, don't film me when I'm just outside line. <laughs> There's a great example. My good friend Nico Bang. He has a high standard of excellence and only wants to be filmed when he is performing in an excellent manner. There you go, Bang. There's Nico's excellent tackle. Uh, there's this standard of excellence that Germans have in many different aspects of life, and I don't even think Germans necessarily realize that they have it. But it is a common trait for people in this country, and it's something that I really respect and admire. So I played college football in the United States for four years, and this is a world where you have practices, lifting sessions, training sessions, meetings, all throughout the week on a very tight schedule. And we are taught during that time that being on time is being 10 minutes early. And this is something that I really value. Nothing bothers me more. Well, I'm sure there's things that bother me more, but this bothers me a lot when people are late. Oh, you would hate my wife. You would hate my wife. Mm -mm -mm. Yeah, she drives everybody crazy. Never, ever on time, ever. Two things. And this is a very rare thing in Germany. German people are world famous for being on time That's cool. and punctual. This is something that I absolutely love about German people. This is a You're two minutes and eight seconds late. I hate meetings with Germans. <laughs> yeah. Characteristic that I really value. Now the Deutsche Bahn the last couple of years, this might be a different story. Being late is wasting everyone's time. I love the way that our coaches in college would explain this. Say we have a meeting that has 45 people in it and you're one minute late to that meeting, you just wasted 45 minutes of people's time. And this is how I always think about this and I really value being on time, which means being five to 10 minutes early for everything. And this is something that I very much admire about German people. Look at all these people. They probably have no idea how much they're missing out by not using CyberGhost VPN. That guy probably accesses just one server instead of the 9,000 servers and over 90. And if you had CyberGhost to USA and articles on website, flights, and hotel, CyberGhost to get it for way cheaper. Yeah, you know I'm fast forwarding this. By switching to an invention, the protection the benefits of not trust pilot. And those seven people would tell them that if they use the euros, I'm... okay, back to the video. Wow, I'm not gonna lie. Uh, I've, I've done some videos about Ukraine and how. Like, it, literally, you could drop food on the floor and it looks like you could just pick it up and eat it, no problem. Same goes for Germany. I mean, it's spotless. Look at this. Spotless. That is beautiful. That is just... Mm. I've been to places in Spain that have, and France that have these little... These little... I don't know, these narrow paths not meant for any cars. And they're just beautiful. They, But not this clean. Planning and preparing for things. Now, if you watched my previous video about the trip in Scotland with my girlfriend, Laura, you will have heard me go on. What the fuck? Is this is Joe Flacco? Am I losing my mind? Is this guy became a YouTube sensation now? He's doing YouTube videos? That's what happened to poor Joe Flacco? Is this not Flacco? I think it's Flacco, man. Maybe I'm just completely wrong and losing my mind. That Maybe it's not Flacco. Well, anyway, he's, it's about Germany traits so maybe that's not flacco it is insane the resemblance though now if you watched my previous video about the trip in scotland with my girlfriend laura you will have heard me go on and on about 
the German characteristic of planning That's and preparing for things. And Germans really have this reputation of not really leaving things up to chance, but figuring out how things are going to go out and know. plan for what could happen, what you expect to happen, and preparing for things that maybe you don't even expect to happen. For most of my life, I've been more of the, hey, let's kind of just feel it out and let's wing it and see how it is the day of sort of mentality. And in certain aspects, I still am like this, but I have taken note of the German way of planning and preparing for things, and I've implemented that more and more into my life. Yeah, just overall, in general, the way that Germans seem to think ahead and plan things out is something I really admire. Now, I've talked about this quite a bit before in previous videos, but the mentality when it comes to a work-life balance for people in this country. I made a whole video about it going into more detail last fall called why I decided to work like a German, and that goes into a little bit more detail on it. But in short, German people are very good at working hard, being efficient and productive when it's time to work, and then stopping and resting and recharging when it's time to relax. And the thing is, Germans are pretty world famous for being productive and efficient, so this recharging and work-life balance doesn't seem to take away from German efficiency or productivity at all. In fact, uh, studies show that it actually helps it. So this is something that I really admire, this trait and this attitude towards a work-life balance where you are working hard and productive, but you also are a human being and you rest and recover. Really admire the attitude that Germans have when it comes to this. Oh, here goes number five, the one he said we need to worry about. Does Sleepy Joe look Chinese to you? With how deep in the bed he is with communist China. What the hell commercial was that? Wow. Okay. Comes to this. So this one could be a little bit controversial, but I think it's important. And I, I've mentioned versions of this in the past, but the thing that I really admire uh, about Germans is the balance and approach that people in this country have when facing and talking about this country's dark past. Every single country has a dark past. And I think some do a better job at handling it than That's others. True. And I That's think true. Germany sort of leads the world in that aspect. And there's a balance to doing this. There's a little bit of nuance when approaching a subject as delicate as this. And what I admire about Germany is the way that they do such a good job of educating their population on what happened during World War II and the Holocaust, studying it, having museums and statues and memorials and leaving up concentration camps that people can visit, having all of that be a part of society and education. Wow. While at the same time, not making modern day Germans who had nothing to do with this feel guilty personally about it. This is an important balance. You must educate because those who do not know the past are doomed. That's exactly how lots of us feel about slavery. Our generation, our kids, oof, never owned a slave in our lives, you know what I mean? Just like their new generation of Germans, they've they got probably nothing against any Jewish person anywhere, right? So yeah, we have the same thing. Like, why are we still feeling guilty when our stupid ancestors from long, long time ago had slaves and, and you know, were involved in that. We weren't, we're not. So I get it, I get it. To repeat it, but then you must also have a sense of moving forward and not forcing a population to feel a guilt forever based on their ancestors' actions. Of totally course, agree. you're going to have some 100%. people on both ends of the extremes, you know, who people who say, you know what, stop talking about this in schools. We don't even need to educate people about it. Just forget it and don't talk about it. That's stupid. And then you have people on the other side that are saying, no, everyone, modern day Germans need to feel badly for this. And if you're a German, this is your fault. Also stupid. Yeah. Very important to find the nuanced middle. And I think Germany does a great job of that. 
And what makes me admire this even more is the fact that I think my own country does not do a good job of this. Like most of the other countries in the world, my country also has a dark past, but we struggle to find the nuanced way of approaching it and dealing with it in the way that Germany does. Very true. In the United States, the land of extremes, we love taking everything to the extreme. Your approach is either, you know, slavery actually wasn't that bad and uh, we don't even really need to talk. I don't know anybody who's ever said that. Talk about it, like enough, just don't even talk about it. That's stupid. And then you've got people on the other side that say, if you are a white person, you should personally feel guilty for slavery. Also stupid. There is, like Germany has successfully found, a nuanced middle where you properly educate your population about its dark past that its country has, while also not making modern day people who had nothing to do with said dark past feel guilty about their existence today. I am always impressed and admire the way modern day Germans speak about World War II and the Holocaust in this country's dark past. Once again, just great points. I, I, I'm losing my, every time I watch this guy talk, I, I'm in my mind, I'm just losing it uh, because I, I don't know who the hell he is, but I have to, I, I need to know. Uh, but look at this once again, look at this once again. That is, uh, that's what you call special. I haven't seen a car yet, by the way. <laughs> All right, guys, I'd like to give another shout out to the sponsor of today's video, CyberGhost VP. Okay, but what the hell is your name? Say your name. PN, use the link in the description to get all for today. Thanks so much for watching my YouTube videos. I really appreciate it. Hope you have a lovely day, and I will see you. That is definitely, uh, that is definitely not Joe Flacco. But guys, guys, I, I, I mean, this is, <laughs> this is insane. Am I, am I, I mean, come on guys. Look, 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 look. I mean, obviously you got to picture him with a, with a beard and a, Shit, how do I put this on your screen so you guys see this? Uh, let's, 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 let's try to... Come on. All right, let's see if I can do this. I'm going to try to whip this around. Do you guys see this? All right. Hopefully, hopefully you see what I see right now. Do you see that guy? Did that dude who was just talking not look like this dude? Seriously. Joe Flack, just just put a mustache and a beard around him. And, I mean, come on. But, yeah, it's not Joe Flacco. <laughs> it's not, but, man, that is, that's weird. You got to admit, come on. You got to admit it. All right. We'll go back to our video now. All right, guys. Uh, I love videos like this. I really do. I love videos like this. Uh, I love learning about other countries. And this is one I've never been to. So it's, you know, it's even better when I'm looking at a country I've never been to. Uh, but yeah, it's beautiful. It's beautiful. I'm sure you could do a whole video of, matter of fact, why don't you guys hit me up with one. A video, I mean, you've seen some Ukraine videos. Uh, I mean, you know. Prior to the war, I was doing, you know, there was videos of, of Russia on, on their landscape. Uh, I think we did one with China. Um, uh, Indonesia. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, the landscapes are just phenomenal in some of these countries. And I guarantee you guys got some beautiful things to show, too. So if you got one that kind of just shows all of your highlights of places to visit, you know, Things that you know you're most proud of, the, the places to to that every tourist should check out, etc. You know, food, what kind of food you guys eat, you know, that sort of thing, man. Oh, definitely hit me up. I'll check it out. All right, there you go, people. Five German character character traits that Mister Not Joe Flacco really respects. I swear, I can't believe that's not him. But anyway, all right, guys. Whew, cool video, really. 
I enjoy this kind of stuff. Take care. Peace out. Have a good night.